Hey kids, welcome back to Rob's Red Hotspot and uh, let's play of SimCity 4. So last episode uh, we started our the core of our what will be our our eventually our thriving metropolis uh, and it's called Plantation Bay in this region that's called Plantation Bay which I, I checked actually does come from a USGS satellite map I think somewhere in California so I've posted a link to the download for this file if you want to work on the same city map at some point in SimCity 4 and also to give credit to the user who made it uh, I think it's this map has been around for quite a while uh, but I like it a lot so you can see uh, you can see here this is what we built last time that little that little three by three block square block uh, residential area with the farms around it and I wanted to show you guys this kind of zoomed out whoa that cloud is really weird I wonder whether that's like a graphics glitch or something that's like the squarest cloud ever anyway um, so I wanted to uh, give you a sense of like just how big these maps can get and the map size that you're seeing here like if you're looking along these edges this is like this is not the limit you can you can make one of these maps using a satellite image or even make it yourself uh, if you learn how to actually make custom maps you can make a map as big as you want as big as your processor can handle so the the limits in terms of how big a city you can make in, uh, in or a city region you can make you could even make several huge cities connected by highways you could make a whole country if you wanted if you had enough time and and if your computer is powerful enough to process it all uh, then you you really the sky is the limit. Uh, so so that's one of the one of the most appealing features about this game. Even though it's it came out in 2003, uh, it's it still is very very powerful. Uh, the your computer is going to be limited because it's a 32-bit application, and I don't think it does kind of multi-thread processors. I don't think it really. I don't think it really uh, is op totally optimized for use on modern computers. So there is a limit to how fast you can run this game, and and potentially as a result, how big cities you can you can have. But depending on what kind of computer you have, it, you should be able to do some some pretty astoundingly ambitious things with this. But for now, we have this uh, this tiny three by three block, low density residential farming village. So we're going to try and make something a little bit a little bit more impressive. Uh, we're going to stick, uh, I think, still on this region map. We're not going to move into the neighboring regions yet. We're just going to try and focus on this one area. Uh, so let's get started. So we can also zoom in here and kind of get a sense of what sort of thing is building here. So you'll see that these blocks actually have several houses even like the the zone actually has its frontage which is this little arrow here on that street and yet if i look here it looks like there's actually two two of these cottages sort of cheap low end housing on um on that lot so that has to do with how wealthy our sims are the more wealthy they are the more living space they'll they'll have and that's Anyway, we'll get we'll see more about wealth as as the city continues to grow. But for the time being, as we can see, we we kind of have a shortage of jobs. We've got uh, lots of people. We've got uh, well, it's two thousand people, so it's really a, a small village. But we we have a huge demand for jobs. So there's a couple things we could do. We could build more farms, as I said last episode. Uh, maybe build a bridge here and kind of farm all this area. But uh, for various reasons, which I'll get into later, farming is just not going to be the way to go in this game unless you get some farming mods, which I currently don't have installed. So let's let's diversify the economy. Uh, let's start by I'm going to start by commercial rather than an industry for a couple reasons. Uh, so let's maybe start by developing these zones here. We can just dezone them. Maybe we can develop these zones that haven't developed for whatever reason, well, because there aren't enough jobs. And let's let's make some kind of corner store style uh, business, and let's just see what that does. We have a very small demand for commercial services, and let's go. So that's going to build up right away, and as you can see, as that builds up, I think a few more houses have kind of stacked up on these lots. Uh, and you can see that, yeah, we, that even just those few tiles has really used up the demands. But we've the population edged up a little bit there. These all feed into one another. So if I build more houses, I get more demand for for workplaces. Depending on the wealth level and the education level of the residents, uh, they'll be demanding different kinds of jobs. 
uh, as we build more industry, they need commerce, so that they need to whatever, whether it's farm produce or industrial manufactured goods, they need somewhere to kind of put it to market. So you get commercial demand when you build industry to some degree. Uh, and I'll get into the intricacies of that as we go along, but that's the basic principle. One type of demand feeds into the other. Um, so we've got some commercial a uh, little bit of commercial there, but that's about as much commercial as we can build uh, before, well, we've run out of demand. So I still kind of want to fill these jobs, and I think rather than give them agricultural jobs, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I think, a factory. Uh, well, a factory, a, a, an industrial zone, that is. So when we're building industrial zones, we kind of have to think about the same things we thought about when we built this stinky coal factory and this ever-growing pile of garbage. Uh, we don't want it to be close to, well, ideally we don't want it to be close to anything. Uh, it should be kind of isolated. However, we're kind of running out of space unless we build an ex kind of a big expensive bridge. And, well, we do have a bit of money, so we could build a bridge. One thing we could do is, say, build a bridge over here and maybe put all of our dirty factories over there so that they don't uh, so, so that they don't have a, a negative impact on the population here but I'm kind of reluctant to do that because bridges are expensive and they also create a kind of transportation bottleneck anybody who lives in a city with a lot of rivers or you know a place like uh, New York City where you're on an island like Manhattan or I live in Montreal that's also an island bridge traffic is the worst and it's the same in the game you don't want to you don't want to uh, have uh, you don't want to have your entire population reliant on one bridge to get to work because they're just going to get in a horrible traffic jam. So I'm going to use this kind of flat area down here. It's a little bit close to this farm and that's going to have an impact, but I don't think that the future of this town is in farming anyway. Uh, so I'm going to build it down here though. Uh, I'm going to try and sort of use what space I have left uh, while I have some. And the other thing too is that, as I said, I kind of have a historical approach to this game. So. You know, if you look at like the Victorian city as it becomes industrialized, uh, there there were kind of row housing right beside factories, and they didn't really they didn't really have this idea right away that well, I mean, first of all, they were building them in poor neighborhoods, so I don't think they cared, frankly, but they they were you know kind of perfectly happy to have factories right near their workers, so the workers could get to work easily by walking. Uh, and, and so some of our workers, if, we, if we're careful about how we build this, we can kind of do that here. So we still don't need a water system. Uh, we have everything we need. We have power. The, one of the things I would say is I built the commercial first because uh, commercial doesn't, doesn't demand nearly as much in terms of utilities as industry does. As soon as we build industry, it, it draws very heavily on the power infrastructure and then once we start to supply public water it's going to draw very heavily on that so if you're looking for a way to raise your tax income uh, you're probably better off building commercial uh, than you are building uh, industrial because industrial especially dirty industry has a lot of negative effects so let's just let these these tiny little three by three well they're not actually tiny they're quite large factories so let's just see what what we get there they might actually be too large I might have to kind of scale those down but let's see what happens all right, so we've had two factories go up. Let's kind of switch this up and we'll build a few small factories. Kind of wasting money zoning here, but let's uh, let's just... By the way, I hold the control key if I want to decide how big that zone is. If I just hold shift... Oh, shift. Well, that's weird. Oh, that's right. Industry doesn't do that. Right, never mind. Disregard that. No, industry behaves a little bit differently. So I'm just going to zone freely without holding control. If I hold control, I decide the shape of the box that will form. This will just kind of develop randomly based on what the demand is. So if you're having trouble develop, you're going to want to just, you know, hold shift and and pull there. But, but yeah, so there we go. That's kind of filled out. Uh, you can see, I guess this isn't developing probably because it wants a roadway, although it might develop. Industry doesn't need to be right up against the road like uh, like houses do, but okay. So we've got this kind of very grungy factory. Let's look at some of these. Actually, we can zoom right in. We can zoom right in and sort of look at this kind of a little bit dystopian landscape that gets created with industry. So we can see current yeah, current jobs, Dow Chemicals, <laughs> and uh, MPR Metals. 
So we can see there and we can, can does it tell us? Oh yeah, here in this little pop-up it says Indust industrial dirty and then freight trips. We'll talk about freight trips later. We're not gonna get into that right now. But basically we've created some jobs. We still, looks like we still have some demand but we actually have some demand for some more residential now. So again, I'm gonna kind of follow that Victorian model. Oh, before we do that, let's take a quick look. Air pollution, interesting. So those have like not, maybe it's not updated. Let's pass a month. Interesting. So it doesn't look like that's creating too much pollution for now. Hope that's not a glitch. I feel like it should, to be to be perfectly honest. I feel like it should. But uh, maybe maybe it hasn't updated yet. Anyway, never mind. Uh, let's I'm going to kind of redesign these residential zones rather than you know build out into these farms or whatever. I am going to kind of densify right near the factory so that we could have this sort of workman's housing. Uh, yeah, so now I'm holding shift and see I get these long skinny skinny uh, lots. So let's just focus on the areas that are kind of immediately adjacent to... That's the dezoning button by the way, so I'm not only demolishing the buildings but I'm, I'm changing the zone. I can also just up zone ex established zones but I'm just gonna dezone them and let them build, build from scratch. Uh, it's probably a little bit more expensive to do it that way but not a big deal. Oh yeah, so first of all, we can't build, we cannot build higher density residential without getting some water. So we don't want to be putting, we have a few options here, water tower, water pump. Uh, I would advise when you're in a new city, that water pumps are very expensive, 1,400 per month. So that's probably bigger than, yeah, that's like bigger than our entire budget. Or no, wait. Uh, no, 350 per month. Never mind. Uh, we can actually afford this one per month, but um, but no, we it's it's very expensive. It takes a big chunk of our budget, and and you'll see soon we're gonna need some other things. So I'm gonna put the water. Maybe hmm, this is tricky because farms actually pollute water because of the fertilizer. So we want to put the water away from the industry. Let's get out of this view here. We want to put it away from this dirty industry here, away from the farm. So maybe like here. And we're probably going to have to move this infrastructure around at some point, but let's maybe do something like... Sorry, that's a nice brick house, but it's just going to have to go because the city needs water. So I'm not going to give water to the whole city yet. We will soon, but I'm just going to focus on these areas that I want to develop. Uh, so this blue area is showing you how much area the, the water can cover. So let's just start with something like that, sort of a water main along along there and let's see if we can get some higher density residential building up now sometimes there's some thresholds so they won't build unless we get to a certain population so we might actually have to well one thing we can do is what does our zones look like what do our zones look like here it's kind of hard to see the difference in color there, but yeah, you can see just that little corner there is, let's let's maybe take a, a bigger part of this, see if we can spur on development that way, uh, like that maybe. There we go. So now you see we're getting this, this kind of, you know, I would say, what are these? sort of four-story walk-ups. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. I think that's our first reward. Uh, we got the farmer's market. That's kind of cool, actually, because the farmer's market is a reward. Oh, we, we got the mayor's house, too, which I never built, so maybe we'll build that, too, eventually. Uh, the farmer's market costs 30 bucks per month. It actually provides a small health bonus to the kind of neighborhood it's in, uh, so that's kind of neat, um, but uh, you, in order to get it, I guess we can't see the requirements yet because we've unlocked it, but you need a certain, if you look at jobs and population here, you need a certain amount of agricultural population and you need a certain amount of population there, and I think you need a certain mayor rating as well. Uh, mayor rating is sort of the overall satisfaction of your, of your sims, so yeah. We got the farmer's market. I kind of want to build that because I don't think that these farms are going to stay and and once we get rid of them, we won't be able to build it anymore because we'll, we won't fit the requirements. So it'd be kind of cool. You know, like if you go to old cities in Europe that have, beco have become like large industrial cities, but you still have these farmer's markets from when they were small cities. So I think it's kind of cool to kind of grandfather in this 
this farmer's market. Uh, I feel like the farmer's market should maybe be close to some of this new commercial stuff we put in there. So maybe we'll put it here. Maybe this will be kind of the, the market square of, uh, of this small, small city. And we've got this kind of apart strip of apartment buildings there. Now you can see we've used up all of our residential demand. Well, most of it. No, some is still building. There we go. We're up to, we've almost doubled. Well, we're up to 3,000 3, uh, residents. And at that point, we're pretty much hitting the limit of what we can build in terms of residential demand. See, it's in the negative. That means there's, there's too many people living here. There's probably unemployment. People don't have jobs. So if we want to get more people, we're going to have to build more, we're going to have to build uh, places for them to work. So uh, I think I'm going to continue with this basic idea of this kind of southern part of the city being an industrial area. So let's drag another street down there. It just You see it just sort of runs through, it demolished any houses that were in the way. Uh, and let's build some more medium density industrial. All right. And probably the most efficient way to do this, just drag that over there. Uh, it takes a second for it to update sometimes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's got water. That should eat up all that demand. Oh yeah, see right away. Now we had we had turned down the funding on the power plant. Uh, very low because we had this agricultural town, but now you can see this this little symbol here means we're we are short on power. And so I'm going to turn that up. Also, uh, something I didn't do last uh, last video uh, is look at the news thing here. Can I make this bigger? No, I guess I can't. Uh, the news thing is, you know, some of this is really just kind of flavor, and it's once you once you get to know the game. I mean, it's very it's kind of fun to look at this early on, uh, and it can get, kind of give you some good pointers as to what your city needs. Once you get familiar with the game, I think you'll probably find those kind of pop-ups to be more annoying than anything. So, I mean, there's also these these are kind of like jokes. Cucumber shaped like broccoli found in Plantation Bay Garden. Like, there's some of them are mildly funny in the sort of like 2003 sim city the sims kind of humor uh but uh but yeah no so these little dots are mostly just humorous like you know newspaper kind of back of the newspaper kind of jokes uh this is a kind of tutorial thing here uh this is well the blue ones are kind of neutral the green ones are are sort of positive and the red ones are more urgent so yeah, this is just telling us that some of our sims don't have water, and I, I'm aware. Uh, these these pop up at the beginning. Those have to do with the advisors. Where are the advisors? The advisors are here. These are there's they all have names. There's the city planner, the finance advisor, the utilities advisor, the public safety advisor, the health and education advisor, transportation, and this one is environment. Uh, so. This is another way to view these news items. So, you know, it's it's actually this this view. I I don't spend a lot of time looking at these. I mean, the animations are kind of hilarious, actually. They they use the exact same graphics, I think, as the as like the OG original Sims game, which was released, I think, the same year or kind of in tandem with this. There's a number of features that aren't very popular anymore, that we're trying to kind of tie this game into The Sims, into a coherent kind of marketing thing, which is kind of silly, but also kind of hilarious in a retro gaming kind of way. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I, the, the colors here are actually somewhat useful. If you want to get a sense of like, if you want to just get a quick overview of like what's okay and what's not okay in your city, like if this power guy is red, that that's the utilities advisor. That's usually... You know, total city infrastructure threatened by power funding scarcity. That's that kind of. We can click on these. Actually, if we click on it here, we can we can click that little link there, and it will tell us like what the source of the problem is, which is that this plant was underfunded. Now, I've just re I've just increased its capacity about tenfold, so that problem is going to go away. Uh, I can, if I ad advance the clock, 
like that. You see, that one goes gray, and that means, like, problem solved. So we can do that. We can also just delete it. If I know I fixed the problem, I'll delete it. Uh, this is telling us that... Oh, no riots in five years. Interesting. Uh, I actually didn't didn't know that that's what that meant, so that's kind of neat. Let's close that and see if we can pull that feed off again. Riots are a thing, and they do happen, and it's actually it's kind of easy to have riots happen in this game, especially if you're playing really fast. Uh, you can, if you if you sort of neglect something for too long, uh, they start rioting about it. Okay, this is just introducing us to one of the uh, one of the advisors. Power plants rolling in dough. This now this is telling us that we've given like more money than we need to the to the uh, coal power plant here because you know see we only need 740. So I could actually lower that. Uh, I t tend to find that once you get your city going though, you're probably well, it depends. It depends. Sometimes you're going to want to leave them on full because if you're developing, if you're growing the city very quickly, like if you're kind of exponentially expanding the population, uh, then having to constantly go and adjust these little sliders is just not worth your time. You might as well just wait until that capacity gets eaten up. So I'm going to put this to kind of two-thirds with that in mind. Uh, and we can dismiss We can dismiss these. They're, they're fun to read, actually. They've got a, a kind of... They do have a sort of fun sense of humor. Uh, everyone's at home. Everybody's home. Okay, that's just telling us that w everyone's got power. Broad power grid anticipates needs. Yeah, same kind of thing. So a lot of these things are kind of redundant. Yeah, all right. Uh, and this is telling us that they want a fire station. And I think that's actually probably a good idea because as soon as we start to get uh, heavy industry, uh, if we look at this map here, fire hazard. So you can see we've got some fire hazards out here and stuff, but it's kind of a farming area, so it's not really likely that it's going to create like a great urban fire, but probably is a good idea for us to build maybe just a small fire station. This view is really hard to see. I mean, it's good at like a glance, like you can see like, oh, there's industry there. It's kind of a hot spot. Uh, if we didn't provide water to this industry, it would be even darker red because having um, central having centrally provided water uh, reduces the fire risk, which which makes sense, right? I mean, if you've got running water in a, in a factory, it would be easier to put out a fire, and maybe you don't even have to call the uh, call the fire department. But uh, but yeah, let's maybe stick this here. Uh, you can see that that radius is, is where it uh, is, is how much area it covers. So it's actually not going to cover the entire city, but we're just going to go with that for now because we might not actually be able to afford much more than that. Our budget's still looking pretty good, but you can see, like, just offering that one service, like, what do we, what do we got here? Residential taxes. This is our income, and these are our expenses. So you can see utilities are a big chunk of the budget. Uh, public safety. That's fire. That includes fire. So that that it was 125. Utilities. Yeah. So power is our biggest expense. Um, yeah, and so. Until we get some richer sims and we're bringing in more tax money, we need to be a little bit... We can't be too ambitious about what services we're going to offer. Uh, that was just a building unlocking. We did actually get, though, uh, what might be nice, we did get a couple of rewards. We got the mayor's house. Um, I don't know if I want to build that quite yet. We got the church, uh, the first church. You get a few of these. Uh, house of worship. Uh, of course, because it's not necessarily a church, it could be a mosque. Uh, and the house of worship is interesting, it doesn't cost you anything, uh, but it provides a little boost. So I kind of like to build them in, in, in the early phase. Again, I have this sort of historical perspective on this game. I kind of like to build them in the early phase of the game because, you know, you think about sort of a 19th century city and or even an early 20th century city where really your churches and, and that kind of thing is is sort of the um, a lot of social services are really just provided as charity like they're, it's not there's no public you know public school system public health care system if you get sick like maybe some nuns will take care of you uh, and I you know I think it's it's neat to to build these uh, these cities that like aren't really nice cities uh, in a in a 21st century way but that that kind of develop the problems of a 19th century city and then and then you know you kind of solve those problems as they come along and then you have other problems that you try and solve all right grave so this is this is we're now getting because we built every time we build a, a church we get a I should slow this down why don't I just put that like that so that I'm not constantly pausing and unpausing 
And then these animations will keep kind of driving around. We can see these little little cars which drive about a third of a block and then disappear into the ether. That's just uh, that's just part of the uh, the SimCity magic. Um, but yeah, so cemetery. Cemeteries are big, they take a lot of space, and they don't really do all that much. I don't know what bonuses they provide. All, all of these rewards that you get, some of them provide bonuses, and some of them provide malices. So, uh, I'll build a cemetery kind of on the edge of town. Uh, mostly because they're, they're really big. I think that, I'm not sure, but I think that the vanilla cemetery, I think this actually fills up with graves as time passes. Like, we are in year six of this city, but I think that well, well, let's pay attention to this. Let's maybe you know what I can name this. Here's another cool feature. So, uh, so let's. I don't know, first cemetery or something. You know how you've got like the first Baptist church of such and such or whatever. Like we can we can kind of give it a name like that. And oh yeah, all of these these this the statistic misplaced coffins hilarious. Uh, so I, I'm kind of curious because I think I'm pretty sure that this fills up with graves as as time passes, which is kind of neat. Uh, I'm not entirely positive, but I think it's the case. So I want to test that. Maybe in a few episodes we'll go back and check the cemetery and see if it got if, if it if it filled up. Right. So what's going on here? Um, this hasn't finished building. One thing that I think is really important is don't just start zoning willy-nilly everywhere until until you're done building. So let's speed up again and let's wait until this kind of like, yeah, so we can even see here. Let's just make sure that this is up zoned. This is probably not building because we're probably starting to get some, some pollution. Oh yeah, so that's, we're starting to get some pollution there and we're gonna have pretty serious problems of pollution uh, if we keep building factories in the way that we are. But again, I'm kind of going for this 19th century city, so I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep uh, keep uh, building uh, keep building factories and we're just going to see see what that causes in terms of problems. Uh, and I'm going to upzone this residential and let's uh, we also should probably build some commercial at some points all right let's just sort of do this so this whole lower area of the city is gonna be is gonna be residential or sorry uh, denser and then let's let that tick have we got water everywhere we need it I'm gonna give water to the whole city now oh wait so yeah we've got a bit of an issue there are we so you can see that this isn't covered and usually that means yeah we're we're at capacity for water um, we, we will probably get a warning here but uh, at some point but I'm not gonna wait for it uh, I'm just gonna replace that with the higher capacity one uh, if if you're not familiar with the game and you haven't played it a lot I would advise building like if you look at the cost here monthly cost 50 water produced 2400 uh, these are cheaper until you get these are cheaper overall f f given what they provide given how much water they produce uh, but if uh, but basically you kind of want to build these uh, until you get to the cost of that. So you can get seven of these before building one of those. Wait, seven times five? Yeah. Uh, so this is 350 per month and this is 50 per month. So generally you'd want to build seven of these before you get one of these, but let's just build that one um, so that we're not constantly... Yeah, see it's really pushing the budget, but I'm not going to be building a lot of amenities because, like I said, I'm kind of building this the somewhat grim Victorian city, and, and that way we're not going to have to kind of micromanage water for the next little while. And you can see these kind of tenement style, low wealth uh, buildings building up. Uh, looks like this hasn't densified. We have demand for it, but it hasn't gone up, and that again is because people just don't want to live near the pollution. So, yeah, no, that's all. That's all to be expected. Yeah, and we're starting to get some, so we're starting to get some of some more stuff here. Um, 
So I think we're gonna maybe densify the rest of the city. We're gonna kind of move into a, we're gonna turn this three by three grid into a, a kind of mid density, maybe European town level of uh, sort of small, you know, small city in Europe level of density. And once, and then we'll get a sense of, we'll get a sense of like how much, how many people we can support in this, in this area. And maybe, yeah, and how many jobs we're going to need for them. By the way, uh, this is a good time to kind of segue into some talking about mods. I, you'll notice, uh, well, and seasoned players will notice that my re my my industrial zone is is pretty small, for given the um, the residential zone it's supporting in terms of jobs. I use a, a very simple mod, which I, I put a link to in the description. I didn't put a link, but I put the name of the mod, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Um, I can put a link, maybe. And uh, it just doubles the number of jobs. I think it's called Dirty Doubler, and it doubles the number of jobs in these factories, because if I think the vanilla numbers, like this, like, take a look at this, this building here. This provides... It's providing 36 jobs. I think that the in in the vanilla original SimCity 4, this this whole facility is providing like 18 jobs maximum. So that 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 to me doesn't make sense. Uh, these like factories factories have you know dozens of workers in them. Uh, we can get some like this. What is this? A cement plant or something? Yeah. So the the, the vanilla version it only provides like 100 and. Uh, you know, math, half of that, uh, and uh, and in the um, in this mod, it's providing twice that. So that that's that's good uh, because I, you you look at if you look at city planning maps too. The, you know, you can, you can provide a lot of jobs in a small area if your factories are you know tightly built together. You can you can really uh, so it doesn't really make sense to me to have those those kind of low density factories. Anyway, we need more jobs. Speaking of jobs, we need jobs. So we have a little bit of commercial demand and lots of industrial demand. Uh, I'm ignoring the agricultural demand, uh, as, we, as I said. So we are running out of space uh, to build industry unless we start to kind of get rid of some of our farms, which I'm going to hold off on kind of to the last minute. Uh, so let's just, let's just build more right to the edge of the water. And... Some of this won't have roads to it. Probably gonna need to build. Oh, maybe. Oh, that's that's pretty good. Let's give it some water. Oh no, it's got water. Everything's got water. Everybody's happy, sort of. Not really. And is that enough jobs to build all that up? No, no. We still have. Did I actually upset on that? I did, didn't I? So. Oh, I don't think I gave it water, did I? Nope. That's the culprit. So we need water here. Uh, this can provide one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you want to be like really precise about this, but I don't, I don't usually bother. Uh, you you want to build sort of every six tiles a, a new water pipe, but that's that's pretty. I don't know. It, it, it depends how how kind of OCD you want to get with. Uh, with measuring out the tiles and stuff. Like, I remember I talked about making six by six grids, and then I rewatched the video uh, before I posted it yesterday, and I noticed that, like, this is a seven by six grid. So, I'm gonna be doing a lot of that, kind of making little mistakes like that, and, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a surveying mistake, you know? Oh, we got another church. I'm gonna build the church. Um, we've got one kind of right in the center of town. Let's build one off to the edge. Maybe we'll expand the town over here. And then we'll get another cemetery, probably. Almost definitely. Uh, we are... We need more jobs. More jobs. Uh, I'm going to densify. I'm going to go... I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to go straight to, like, high-density industry. And it's going to cause some problems. It's not... Uh, it may not... Uh, it may... It may cause some serious problems for our city. We've got a fair amount of money. It's costing me a lot. The denser zones cost more to zone, so it is costing me to do this. But I'm just keeping an eye on this this money down here because once we get these really big factories, that some of which we might get um, as this develops, uh, we uh, 
we, we can very easily use up our power and water capacity, especially because, well, our water is actually, where is our water? Oh, our water's right by, we're gonna have to move this. This is too close to, uh, it's probably gonna get shut down because of pollution. Yeah, so we're already getting a, but you can see we've used up half the capacity of this just by building these bigger factories. I wanna see if I can actually get a really big one to build. So if I like dezone that, start with a size three one. If I dezone that and I hold down control, there. Let's see if I can get something that size to build. Let's see what happens. Sometimes it doesn't like it. I'm not exactly sure. It uses like a random. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna fuck with that for now. But you can, you can, you can sort of control the size of buildings that gets built, um, which can be kind of neat. But we should get some. We should get some very large factories at some point. Uh, we still don't have any any residential demand. Uh, and I think I think we've kind of hit the edge of what we can build without e expanding the city. Now, what we do have, though, is commercial demand. So, at this point in time, let's kind of get a general overview of what's going on. Yeah, city water filled with filth. So, there's two ways we can solve water pollution. One is by building a water treatment plant, which is very large and oops very expensive 350 per month we can afford it but still it takes up a lot of space uh, and we don't really have space until we start thinking about maybe building a bridge or or kind of building out into this farmland um, so there's two ways we can fix the water pollution problem we can either move our water source away from the pollution so like there maybe there or we can try and actually clean up the pollution. And I think that the simpler thing to do is to kind of put this maybe like here. So let's just kind of line that up with that road. Let's just put it there. Uh, water pumping stations need, they need electricity. So we're probably gonna have to, oh no, it's, yeah, it's only three tiles away, okay. Anything that's within three or four tiles gets underground. Uh, electrical connection so you don't actually have to build and then I'm going to delete that old one so and they want commercial so there's a few few more things we're going to do here uh, how are we doing on money so that I don't know whether that will actually solve that problem it's probably still not very clean to be honest but uh, but I'm going to go with it for now uh, and we will build one of those one of those um, one of those water treatment plants eventually. I'm going to ignore these for now. We're not getting any other really... It's not telling us to do anything else. Um, so that's kind of good. And we're starting to make a really healthy profit. One of the, one of the advantages to building a dirty industrial city, uh, especially the first city in a region, is that you will, you will make money. These factories bring in lots of cash. So, yeah, and how is our power? Yeah, so you can start. We basically need to be funding this to the maximum at this point. Um, because you can see we're basically at capacity. Let's unpause, run that for a second, and see just how much power capacity we have. But we can't... Oh, yeah, we can build a bit more. We can build a bit more, but not much. Uh, a handful of big factories could eat up that capacity, like, almost instantly. So... Uh, I'm kind of remiss to uh, build factories along this, this waterfront here, but you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do this high density. We're just jamming in kind of kind of 19th century style dirty industry. And we're going to do that. Oh yeah, there's a big one. Sometimes when I get like a nice big factory like that, I like to make it historical just so that it, it stays. I think these these big factories look kind of epic. Yeah, so just doing that and we've wiped out all of our demand for jobs. And it looks to me, looks like the city is building up a bit. By the way, we are up to almost 12,000. Soon to be, I think, 12,000. Uh, so our main demand, employment demand right now, well, yeah, we're still getting a little bit of dirty industry. 
the men. Uh, but uh, I think our main our main demand for employment is commercial. Now, uh, so one thing we can do if we want to figure out so where do we want to build commercial? There's there's a couple things we can do. We look at our zones here. So one of the things we can do is we can use commercial zones as a buffer uh, between the residential areas of the city that you know people don't want to live right by, by factories uh, and and the industrial areas. So it can be kind of a pollution buffer because com com commercial areas, especially these kind of cheap low ends, this is low um, low wealth commercial services. Uh, it's very hard to see, but CS and CO, CO's office, so it's low wealth commercial services is mainly what people are demanding, which is your, you know, well, you know, your, your very basic retail and and stuff like that um, uh, cheap restaurants diners things like that uh, they have a bit of a higher tolerance for pollution than say medium wealth residential the, the other thing that is, the other reason why it can be a good idea to build biz, businesses or sorry commercial services uh, between your industry is a buffer zone between industry and residential areas is that bit com the the businesses benefit from heavy traffic so the more people that are walking or driving uh, or taking the bus or whatever on the streets uh, they're going by the business and they're more likely to shop there so the business actually thrives in a high traffic area while residents actually that the, the pollution in this game the pollution that's created by high traffic areas actually drives residents away so one of the things we can do is sort of rezone a little bit of this yeah we're, we're in negative demand for residential zone anyway so we can we can rezone a little bit of the uh one of the things i'd like to do is let's just take a single row here actually along this maybe this can be kind of a main street and you know what i'll just fix all this i'm kind of aggressively rezoning um if you know if you don't know what you're doing you might want to be a little bit careful about being too gung-ho about deleting whole parts of your cities because you can really mess up your economy um, if you especially I mean that wasn't a huge swath of territory or anything but if you delete substantial amounts of residents what happens is your tax income is going to spike way down and you might you know we're, we are making bank right now but if you're if you aren't making a lot of money you can you can really wipe out your income quite quickly um, especially if you delete things like that industry which is probably we'll look at that in a second but I think industry is probably like yeah let's see and industry is over half of our income right now so if we were to like wipe that out oh it's too dirty I don't like it and we just delete it all like we, we would be very quickly in the red I think um, so yeah anyway uh, looks to me like let's fill this city out a bit more uh, this this video I really wanted to focus on just kind of filling out the space we had I'm not really giving them any goodies they're not really getting any any nice uh, let's, maybe a little road back here I just don't want that factory to get deleted yeah let's let's uh, I got a different idea here let's let's do hmm Uh, no. Like that. Uh, that's good. So we can already see our, our grid pa pattern is starting to kind of break up into a little bit more, a little bit more of a chaotic um, grid pattern. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's do a little bit of terraforming because this, I believe, uh, that was probably I would probably use that to build a bridge in one of my test videos or something. You can see the. The landscape there. Anyway, I just want to kind of, kind of flatten that out a little bit. Um, if you want to flatten out a road, you see how bumpy and ugly this road gets. Take a single tile of street and don't drag. Just click on the individual tile and right beside the road, and you see how that's flattened that out. Like if if you wanted to level the train, uh, that is the cheapest and easiest way to do it in the game. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of fill out this area with more housing, make sure they have water, and all that happy shit, and uh, yeah, let's see here, um, 
probably don't want to build too close to the farm. I want to kind of, you know, for the time being anyway, uh, respect that sort of hedgerow. Um, maybe we can do a little row here just for fun. There we go. Little row of housing down here. It's kind of out of the way to be honest, but it's by the it's by the sea. They can. Uh, I don't even know if that'll build to be honest because it's so it's probably so polluted with industry that it probably won't even build. But there we go. That should build up pretty quickly. Got some kind of larger sized apartment buildings. Um, we're getting some more rewards. Those pop-ups, I keep closing their rewards, and we, we're going to place them eventually. Uh, we, we get You get little rewards for progressing through the game. Uh, they're not all that interesting, especially as you start to play like a modded game and your city gets really big. You, you know, you kind of get used to, oh, there's the city hall again. Um, and, you know, when you're trying to, okay, whoa, yeah, so... I think this is a good place to actually stop this video because we've basically hit our first, our first real development limit uh, in that this this coal plant is at capacity now, and so we have choices to make about what we're going to do with this city, how we're going to handle its resources. You can see here, look, this polluted, this lovely bay is just being polluted by this industrial waterfront. Um, but we have gone from a sleepy village of 2,000 people to uh, an industrial town of 15,000 people. Uh, we've got we've got problems on the horizon for sure, and we're going to try and uh, deal with those problems in in some of those problems anyway in the next episode. We also have a lot of money. We've we've we went from we were down at 13,000 or so. I remember last episode we had kind of hit 13,000, uh, and we're now making. You know, three thousand. Like we're we're almost our income is almost triple our expenses. So we are making lots of money, and uh, one of the best things we can do at this point is to start to spend it to um, make a better city. Uh, and so next episode is going to be all about that. It's going to be about uh, we've got all this this eighty eighty thousand simoleons, and uh, what's the best way we can spend them so that we don't. Uh, ruin our finances, uh, that we make our city better, uh, and that um, yeah, we can we can we can grow the city even better, bigger. So thanks for watching, uh, and if you like this video, uh, obviously, uh, well, please like and subscribe, uh, share, and all that, and uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.